Hold on. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> we're going to move forward from what we were doing last time. Uh, so, we finished doing area between two curves. We're going to start looking at something now called oh. symmetrical solids. So, here's the idea is that we have these objects like an... What do we call this object? A sphere. Orange. A sphere. Okay. Yes, it's an orange. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. We call this a sphere. Um, a football is another one. That's an oblong spheroid, technically. A basketball is another object like that. We have other objects like donuts. A donut is something called a torus, actually. Okay. Torus. Torus. <laughs> torus. Okay. Torus. Okay. Anyway, so we have these symmetrical solids. What we want to be able to do is we want to be able to find the volume of these objects. Now, normally when we find the volume of something, how do we do it? Think back to geometry in your science classes. How would you guys normally find the volume of Base something? Base times width, height, and height. Base times width, times height. You have three dimensions to work with, so we figure out what that dimension is. Multiply them all together, you get your volume. That works for uh, prisms, and that works for rectangular solids. What about spherical solids? Things like cones, spheres, cylinders, etc. You guys remember? Pi. There's pi involved. Typically, there's more advanced pi formula. Pi I don't know which one. Typically, typically there's a more uh, developed, more advanced uh, formula involved. A lot of these are up here. So, like, find the volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed. Okay, we'll talk about where that comes from later. Yes, surprise. Okay. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about where some of these formulas come from and how we find the volumes of some of these objects. Okay. Wait, isn't this geometry? So calculus is technically, is, you, uh, you're going to love this. Do you want to know what the other name for calculus is? Or geometry. Analytical geometry. What? Yes, Ooh, that is the other analysis. name. Calculus. No one has ever said that. Yes. So analysis, the subject of specifically real analysis, is actually the study of what we call calculus, is what you guys know as calculus. And then analytic geometry, which is what we're doing predominantly here. This is um, all of your derivative. Uh, integral calculus based stuff is all about it's just finding <coughs> the areas and volumes and stuff. So it goes back to area and volume again. Yeah, we're okay. not done with geometry. We're not done with geometry. So let's start off with a basic example and then we'll get to my little demonstration here and you guys will all be super impressed and hungry and stuff and it'll be great. You can't really read what's on the board. On the what do you mean you can't read what's on the board? <laughs> like no, the video. In the video. It's not well, very... okay, so there's a little toggle thingy right by that button on the top that just zoom lets in. you zoom in stuff. You should just ask me Oh, okay, I didn't Actually, yeah, too far. Okay, I need back this. What are symptoms for binge eating disorder? I think I need what? like one more book. Put <laughs> <You're> it away, because <laughs> I'm filming. You should have just said that. <laughs> you can edit it out. Put it away. Thank you. All right. Symmetrical solids. So let's say that I have a function here. Let's say we just have, let's use a simple function like f of x is equal to. One. Okay, so we have a constant function. Okay, so here's one. Here's our function going straight across here on out to infinity. Okay, does that show up okay? Yeah. Okay, so this is one, it's our function going out to infinity. And here's what, so you guys need to think now, this requires some spatial reasoning in order for you to do this next part. What were spatial? Spatial reasoning. Astronomical? No, not, not space. Not astronomical. Spatial reasoning is your understanding that he is swinging his keys on his lanyard next to you, but you don't have to be touching it to feel it. You can tell that your cell phone is right in front of you, right? But you're not touching it, right? Okay, you can tell that there's a t table in front of you, the window's behind you, there's a wall, etc., etc. Oh, like That's the spatial the reason. Yeah, it's, it's basically it's an understanding of your place or how things relate in three dimensions. That's a good question. Okay? All right. So here's what we're going to do. This is going to be a revolution. So we've got this object, and we are going to revolve it around the x-axis. Okay. So we're going to take this line, and let's only go to 1. Okay. So let me mark. Actually, we'll go to 2. So here's going to be 1. Here will be 2. So 1, 2. So I've got this object right now. If I take that object and I rotate it in space, what kind of an object do I create? It's three-dimensional. Think about it. If I take this object, so let's say we take this whole area for a second, okay? So I have all of this area right here. 
I take that and I revolve it in space and I connect it all together. What do I create? What object is created? Sphere? No. No, not a sphere. A cube. Or a not a cube. cube. Not a rectangular right. cube. Uh, Any other guesses? Donuts. Not a donut. Not a donut. So let's think about a this. A cylinder. cylinder. It's a cylinder. So what we have here, this is a Oh, you go like. Yeah. So we got a rectangle, right? We got that rectangle. We're holding it. We're holding one end, and then we flip this thing all the way around. This is really bad. We flip it all the way around like this sort of thing, and it creates a circle. Okay? It collects all of those points, so it just turns into a cylinder. So this is just a cylinder, right? Okay. Yes. Let's run with this idea. And I'm gonna, you guys are going to end up with, a, uh, with a, a formula from this. First things first, though. How do we find the volume of a cylinder? What's our formula for it? Volume is height. Height. Uh, the radius. The times area of the diameter. Oh, square. Wait. So you have the What's area of the you have the area of the base, yeah. which is a circle, pi r squared, multiplied by the height. Does that ring some bells? Yes. Oh, Did you ever get that bell? What? Did you order? Did you ever get your bell? No, I did not get my bell. If you guys would like me. So, we have this concept now that, why are you all, we're, we're it all Cody. ready to go with it. We're saying Cody. <laughs> You're not seeing this online, they all have their cell phones out right now, and they're all just sitting here filming. <laughs> so it's like, okay. Anyways, so, we have this concept here. We have a two-dimensional rectangular space, and we, rot and we rotate it around the x-axis, and it generates a cylinder, right? Well, let's take our pineapple and let's turn this thing into a cylinder really quick. We're as That's close to a cylinder as I can. Can you grab me the trash can? Can someone grab the trash can back there? Jim. Oh, Jim. 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 Jim.
yes, I'm an adult. Right. Okay. So we all we're all in agreement here that I have this uh, rectangle. I rotate it around the x-axis. I end up with a cylinder. Yes. Yeah. Everyone oh, yeah. Get those out of your ears. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So we all recognize that this is a cylinder when we rotate it around the x-axis. This more or less looks like a cylinder, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. We know that if we use uh, indefinite or use definite integrals, we are actually accumulating all of this area here that gives us the area under the curve. So here's what we're going to do. What if I took and I take my cylinder and I slice it into a disc like so. Let me slice a few of these. I'm not going to cut my hand off by it. Okay. You think I don't hear you. I hear everything. I don't think you said that. What did you say? You said it. Did you have to take the skin off? Uh, we'll deal with all of that after the demonstration. <laughs> That's why I bought a pineapple, because I what usually only... What if you don't do it right the first time? You don't have another pineapple. I know, so I better not make any mistakes. Okay, so where were we? Okay, so here we go. Oh, that's a graph? So what we have here, we have our cylinder, right? So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking our cylinder, and we're going to slice it into a bunch of... Circles. Circles, which we can find the area of, and we're going to add all of those together, and it turns into an indefinite integral, okay? And we are able to find the volume of a three-dimensional object given only two dimensions worth of information, okay? So, how do we find the area of a circle? You get it later, okay? 2 pi r. <laughs> pi r squared, okay? Got it. So, so here's what we're going to do. So we have an indefinite integral goes from A to B, okay? Um, what we're doing here, A to B is going to take care of our height. So this A to B piece here is really the height of our cylinder, okay? It's that length that goes from here to here. So what we're doing is we're slicing this. What we're doing is we're slicing this into a whole bunch of disks, okay? And we're gonna take each of those disks, we find the area of them, we add them all together, and that will give us the volume of the whole thing. Okay? How do we find the volume? I'm sorry. How do we find the area of the disk? You said it a minute ago. Pi r squared. Pi r squared. What's r given by? That's the real trick to this. What is r? Radius. Radius. What defines the radius? The width. No. Diameter. No, not the width. What defines the radius? So it intersects with the y-axis. Not where it intersects with the y-axis. It's close. X-axis. Not the x-axis either. So remember, we're wrong. Hold on. Okay. We're all wrong. Hold on. Hold on. So come back here to the pineapple. Okay. So remember, we're rotating this thing around the x-axis. So the x-axis is running through right here, right through the middle. Come, come here closer, and you can kind of do an overhead shot. Okay. So this cuts it right down through the middle. Okay. You can stand up on a chair if you need to. That's fine. Okay. So we're cutting it right here. That we rotate it around the x-axis. And that creates our cylinder, and then we have all of these disks, right? Okay. What defines the distance from the center where the x-axis strikes to the outer edge of the circle? What defines that? How is that not Diana. y? It's not y. It's y. What I'm trying to get you guys to see here, it's the function. It's whatever the function is defined as. Okay. We're using a constant function in the second example. We'll do one with a, with a more traditional function here in a minute. This is a constant function running across here. So the function defines what the radius is. Okay? So the function, whatever that happens to be, pi r squared, I will cut it in a minute, weight, okay, dx, okay, that will give us the volume of our object because we accumulate all of those circles. So let's try here. We actually figured this out here a second ago. What was the volume of the cylinder when we use our... Uh, uh, when we use our geometry formula? Two. Okay. No, that was the area of the... Um, so our radius is one, because we only go out to one, so this is going to be pi times one, so this is just pi. What's our height? Two. Two, two. so the volume of this thing, of the six cylinder? Pi, six two. point something. No, it would just be two pi. Two pi. Yeah. Just two pi. Three so point one four times. So two pi is the answer we're looking for here. Let's see if we get that when we plug Your everything in here. Tired. And then we'll eat. Hey, don't. Mango. So, we are going from 0 to 2 of pi. Our function is 1. So we will have 1 squared. 1 squared is just? 1. 5. 1. 
Seven. So this is going to be 2 to 0 of just pi dx. Antiderivative of uh, dx is just going to be, I'm sorry, the uh, antiderivative of a constant is just going to be x. Uh, so what? this will be x evaluated from 2 to 0. So that will be 2, I'm sorry, so that will be 2 pi minus 0 pi. 0 pi goes away, and we are left with 2 pi. So our volumes match up here. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Why can't we do it? just do it like that? That's the old way of doing it. Yeah, uh, you, you know, because this is a very simple solid. We'll do another one here after I cut this up for you guys. That is not a normal, everyday solid for you guys. Okay. okay? We'll do a cone here in a second. You guys will get a better. And you will also do this with parabolas and stuff. And I'll, What I'm going to ask you guys to do is try to draw a picture of the solid that's being created. Jesus. All right? Cool. You can go ahead and stop that, and we'll size up the pineapple. We'll stop it. Would you guys like some pineapples? Yeah.